something else, and that's our resource base, because we know that the feds aren't always going to be there. Here in the interior, in fact, with a reduction in federal contracting, we've seen Corps of Engineer contracts go from hundreds of millions to tens of millions of dollars. We know here in the interior that we have to do something different. Mead Treadwell says he ran for lieutenant governor in 2010 because he didn't feel we were doing what we needed to as a state to be competitive. He says the same applies to the U.S. Senate seat that he's seeking. And I helped uh, try to get a better oil tax through. I helped uh, try to get... Uh, uh, access to federal lands, but I think we need a senator who's paddling in the same direction. And we have a government that spends too much, it borrows too much, it taxes too much, it prints too much money, it meddles too much in our affairs, and it snoops too much. It's absolutely astounding to me the government forgets that its main job is to protect our rights, not to take them away. A fourth GOP candidate for the seat is John Jaramillo of Palmer. We were unable to contact him for an interview. This is Monty Bowen reporting. All right, when we come back, as students are enjoying their last week of summer, many teachers were back in the classroom today. Also, a staged event at the airport tomorrow will help to train rescue volunteers. We'll have the details. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. As parents and kids enjoy the last week of summer, teachers across the Fairbanks North Star Borough started classes to enhance their classrooms today. Stephanie Woodard has more in this report. Parents, it's that time of year again. <laughs> Time for students to return to school and teachers are already beginning to prepare this week. We had the opportunity through a special education grant to bring in um, 12 national presenters and each one is just incredibly uh, top notch in their field and for teachers to take advantage of this has been um, amazing. Now, during the two day sessions, teachers from the borough, university and private schools will meet to help each other prep for the upcoming school year. And it's not so much the subject area, is how do you reach the learners of that subject area? How do you teach math to uh, a child who is a strong, very quick learner? How do you meet their needs and how do you meet the needs of a student who might be struggling? The timing of the sessions was important to the teachers who will officially return to their classrooms this Wednesday, August 13th. You do get excited right before school starts and you want to be as prepared as you can. And so to have this uh, dovetail with the beginning of school was very deliberate. Now, of course, the teachers aren't the only ones preparing for a new year. Excited but nervous. Is that something that you feel every year? You kind of get a little... Yeah. <laughs> I'm excited to ride the bus because I know a lot of people on the bus, so I like the bus. <laughs> I asked for a little bit of advice to those parents getting ready to send their kids off to yet another school year. As a parent myself um, and uh, as a teacher, start getting your kids scheduled uh, now. That, that morning wake-up call comes early and um, and getting them um, excited. I mean, that first day is special and take pictures. School begins August 20th and school officials say you can find supply lists online at local stores and if your student is riding the bus, those lists are also available on the school's website. I'm Stephanie Woodard reporting. Airport police and fire department will rescue and rescue volunteers will rescue people during a staged mass casualty incident tomorrow at the Fairbanks International Airport. While it may be an exercise, it will feel realistic to the first responders. Firefighters will confront a fuel fire and will extricate rescue dummies from crushed vehicles that simulate aircraft wreckage. Doctors from Fairbanks Memorial Hospital will treat about 70 volunteer patients with realistic-looking injuries. The mass casualty exercise is staged every three years, giving emergency services a chance to test their training and work other agencies. The, our airport doesn't have enough staff. To uh, take everybody, we rely on outside agencies to come help us, essentially. And so it's, uh, it's a lot about getting that interoperability with our other agencies out there, um, working with them, and, uh, and showcasing how we can handle an emergency of this size. The public is reminded that the fire and emergency vehicles are part of the airport exercise, which begins tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. In addition, there may be plumes of smoke visible at the airport, which are also part of the drill. Cleanup day transforms the look of city roads from trash covered into clean and green. But how do the streets stay pristine throughout the summer? Tyson Perez Hansen found one reason why and files this report. A group of teenagers and a passionate mentor driving around town can make a big impact in the community. You pick up trash and 
sometimes on, on the side of Richardson Highway, you can look around and you can see exactly where we stopped. On the right side of you would be nothing. On the left side, it would be like a dump. Trash ends up on the roads and public places for many reasons, but the litter patrol targets areas where it piles up quickly. This season, they've collected 15 to 20 tons of trash, and the supervisor, David Drumhiller, says they're constantly looking for more. When we find places that are really dirty and we get them cleaned up, yeah, they can be trashed again in a couple weeks, but we're pretty much on it real quick. I love it. Chips and salsa. Drumhiller has managed the litter patrol for nearly 30 years, and he turned it into a nonprofit about a decade ago. Uh, and it's more than just keeping the town clean. It also uh, trains young people about having a pride in their town. Well, most of them go on to be uh, very conscientious citizens in Fairbanks. He hires about 20 local kids to work each season. They're divided into two groups, the A and B team. A team works the first half of the summer. The B team works the second half. Drumhiller says it gives the teens good work experience and it doesn't use up their whole summer. I think it's a great way to help, to help out with the community and it's a, it's a brilliant first job. This is Tyson Paris Hansen reporting. Well, looky here. Hey, guys. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Good. Joe How's Cook. Yeah. Awesome vacation <laughs> for you. We're just speechless Pretty much. To see yeah, yeah, yeah. I was speechless to be back. Had a great uh -huh. time. Went home to Virginia. Then I had a little staycation here in Alaska. Went to Denali National Park for the first time. Did the yeah. Denali Raft Adventures. Did the Stern Wheeler Tearing Off Chief Sunday Brunch You've River done Tour. More? Gina Hot Springs, everything. Wow. More than I've ever done. So the question wow. is did you fall out? <laughs> oh, no. Did you choose to jump out of the raft? And uh, no, I stayed in as much as possible. No Did they give you the choice that where you could jump out and float down? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. they gave you mm -hmm. all the precautions, what you, you need do to it? do. Nah. I was trying to stay in as much as possible, and I was successful. You mm -hmm. know what? When I rode those, they <laughs> gave me the princess seat, as they ah. called it, because I was terrified, right. which basically was the scariest seat. I thought it was safe, <laughs> and I ended up on a flying ride. It was, it was really bad. Very good. Well, it was good. Very but good. So it's good to be back. And uh -huh. uh, when we come back after the break, we'll have the weekend recap in sports. Hello, Interior Alaska. Joe Cook back in the sports seat for you this Monday evening after a nice vacation. Thanks to Austin Buchanan for filling in. Happy to be back with your local sports. Now, today, the 11th Alaska International Senior Games continued, and Wicks Field was the site for arguably one of the most popular sports of AISG, bocce. Bocce is essentially curling on grass, and the interest has been growing much like pickleball, another popular event among seniors. 120 competitors signed up for bocce this year, setting a new record for participants. Players aim and throw their bocce balls and try to get the closest to the white jack or Paulino. That determines the winner. You can get bonus points if you hit that jack. This was doubles action from this afternoon's double elimination tournament. Out of the 120 bocce players, one has seniority over all of them. Miss Betty Upright. She is 99 years old and is the oldest AISG competitor. Miss Upright also bowls. She'll be competing tomorrow night in singles on the Arctic Bowl lanes. She says AISG keeps her going and she is impressed with the growth of the games over the years. As long as I'm physically able, why well, I'll try to participate, and I'm glad to see the big turnout. We started out with barely 100 people the first year. Uh, Jim Madonna brought it to our town and put in $30,000 of his own money to get it started because there was no funding or anything. So it's grown now, 370 people participating, which is very wonderful. <laughs> Are some of this morning's singles bocce champions. Kay Fighton won the gold for the women's 55 through 59 age group, while Rick Robertson won the men's gold. Rick Borman won the gold for the 65 69 men's age group. Goldie Southwind got gold for the 70 through 74 women's division. Colleen Redmond won the 80 to 84 women's division. And John Brulette won the men's division. AISG continues throughout the week, and so visit the sports page, webster11.com, for more on results and event schedules. Sunday was the final day of the Alaska State Senior Amateur Championship at Chena Bend Golf Course. William Arnold out of Anchorage held on for a three-stroke win for the men's championship, highlighted by a 72 on day two. Peter Hakes took second, and Randy Merrill, he shot a 72 on Sunday. He jumped from eighth 
to finish third. Susie McLeod is this year's women's champion. Her total score of 240 included a championship flight best score of 78 on day two. Teresa Fisher was second and Kathy Shuttleworth finished third. A big soccer tournament was hosted by the Fairbanks Youth Soccer Association this weekend. The Alaska Youth Soccer State Cup had 27 teams from all over the state come to Fairbanks for the tournament, which featured U-12 up to U-18 squads. Among the notables, the Eclipse 2000 team won the U-15 Girls State Cup with a 2-1 win over the Alaska Rush in Sunday's final. The Fairbanks U-12 boys team, the Fairbanks Rush, they won the boys title, shutting out the Alaska Rush 2-0. Fairbanks Rush also won the U14 boys crown. The Eclipse 99 girls team made it to the title game in the U16 division, but fell to the Alaska Rush 1-2. The Cook Inlet Soccer Club Velocity won the girls U18 championship. And one runner made heads turn on the trails this weekend. Dana Fierre was the big winner despite finishing second overall in the Granite Tours run on Saturday. Fierre's time of 2 hours, 22 minutes and 45 seconds broke a 15-year-old record set by Jane LeBlanc who ran 233.49 in 1999. The Granite Tours is the sixth race in the Northern Trail Series. Devin McDowell came in first in that race in two hours, 19 minutes, and 51 seconds to win the men's title. Also, Tommy Dayhill came in first in the Alaska Statehood Fun Run Walk 5.5K race with a time of 21 minutes, 44 seconds. Melissa Lewis was second in the women's leader, finishing in 22.35. The summer season for a couple of interior baseball teams has ended. The Gold Panther season ended last week at the National Baseball Congress World Series, and the Alaska Wild season came to an end over the weekend. The Juno Midnight Suns held the Wild to just two hits and a 14 to nothing shutout win, eliminating the Wild from the Northwest Class A Regional Tournament. The Wild lost to Whitefish Glacier Twins of Montana on Friday. The Alaska Wild had success in their first year in the Alaska Legion Baseball, going 17 and 14 overall. They won the Horizon Lions Invitational Tournament for the teams ranked 9 through 16 at the end of the Legion season. The Wild went 13 and 12 overall and 9 and 9 overall this summer in Legion play. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Your full weather forecast is coming up next and we'll catch you next time. All right, welcome back to the weather segment of our broadcast. Mike is not here for the week, but I'd be more than privileged to take you through this little journey we call weather. Let's take a look at our almanac, our normal high for this day, 67 degrees. We actually got into the 80s today, folks. Normal low is 48 degrees. A record high was set back in 1980, 84 degrees, and a record low at the freezing point of water, 1944, 32 degrees. Sunrise, sunset equals 16 hours, 53 minutes. That is another loss of seven minutes over yesterday. Let's go ahead and take a look around the state for today. As you can see, even Fort Yukon got in, got in on the good weather, uh, 73 degrees. Nome even 77 degrees. And as far as Bethel, also on the west coast there, 73. Good all around, just a tiny little circulation of moisture down in the Gulf of Alaska. But other than that, looking pretty fairly well across the entirety of the state. Let's go ahead and take a look down at the lower 48. Wee, there we go. As you can see, Washington for this time of year getting into the 90s. Not bad for them as well. Uh, San Francisco 79, Vegas and Phoenix, Arizona 109 degrees. That is hot, folks. But the heat continues throughout much of the U.S. Lower 48, Dallas 95 degrees. New Orleans seeing some, some rain from uh, out in the Gulf areas there. Uh, as well as Miami 92 degrees and some showers. So let's go ahead and take a look to see what's going on late this week. As you can see, a high pressure system will bring lots of very warm, intense heat. And then some uh, PM thunderstorms and maybe even some tornadic activity in those states as well. So you got to watch out for that. Other than that dry in the Pacific Northwest and uh, continued warm uh, conditions seasonally. Let's go ahead and take a look at Alaska for the northern part of the state for tomorrow. Partly cloudy for Barrow, partly sunny for Nome, and isolated thunderstorms for Fort Yukon in highs in the 70s. Barrow getting up into the 40 degree range. For us in the interior, let's take a look-see. As you can see, we're going to have maybe some possibility of thunderstorms in the late e evening delta as well, and Healy will look kind of overcast with highs of 68 degrees. Taking a look down to our state capital, Juneau, 63 degrees and showers, Ketchikan, 71, and taking a quick look over there at the uh, southwestern portion of the state. Uh, like Mike always likes to say, a mixed bag of weather right there. Kodiak with some showers, showers for Bethel as well, rain for Cold Bay, and temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. In the Anchorage Bowl, or what we call South Central, rain showers at Anchorage, rain likely for Homer and Valdez as well. So we're going to get some, uh, some moisture for the next couple of days, especially uh, in the interior as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our forecast overnight. 
Isolated shower or thunder showers possible. What's the difference? Well, obviously you get the lightning and thunder going on with those thunder showers as they develop overnight. Overnight low 54 degrees. Let's take a look at tomorrow. 71 degrees projected high for tomorrow. Partly cloudy with isolated showers or thunderstorms. But uh, there's a possibility they could uh, be to the east or uh, north of us. So. Taking a look at our extended forecast, temperatures in the 70s, so uh, the rain will come out of the picture after tomorrow and then for the rest of the work week. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s, overnight light lows maintaining in the lower to mid 50s, so overall a great weekend or work week and going into a weekend that uh, so far no showers on the horizon. Great, that, that looks was great. great. I, I, we couldn't ask for more. I, I know, I get to do... Football season starts this weekend, too. Yes, absolutely. Great. Football in this kind of weather, perfect. You know, mm -hmm. I, I know some seasons where it's just been downright cold out there, you know, for the overnight exactly. the games, but no, not this time. It's going to be nice. Very good, very good. I'm happy. You know, one time I get to do weather, and I actually get to bring positive weather. 80s. <laughs> positive. Nice. Yep. That'll wrap up this Let's edition of back. Fairbanks. That's right. Evening <laughs> news. We are glad you could join us. All right. Well, some somber news tonight on NBC Nightly News. Oscar winning actor Robin Williams has died at the age of 63. That is coming up next with Brian Williams. You can join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webster11.com. All right. From all of us here at the News Center, we hope you have a great night. See you back at 11.